Good morning, everyone. Here's a problem for our new chapter involving momentum. Here we have two friends, Sam and Abigail, who are going to collide on the surface of a frozen pond. We'll position them like this and call the x direction east and the y direction north. Before they collide, Sam is pushed purely towards the east and Abigail purely towards the north. Once we push them, they'll crash into one another. And then after that interaction, Sam will be moving at a rate of six meters per second at an angle 37 degrees north of east. And Abigail will be moving at a rate of nine meters per second at an angle of 23 degrees south of the same direction. We're not provided any forces or energies or anything like that. So that means we have a completely new concept to apply here, which is the conservation of linear momentum. It's very similar to the conservation of energy we've seen from the last chapter, where the initial quantity is equal to the final, except with momentum, we're now working with vectors. The definition of momentum is mass times velocity. And since vectors are involved, we have to be very careful. This conservation technique only works if you apply the initial and final in the same directions. Let me show you what I mean. Here's the conservation of linear momentum applied to Sam and Abigail in the X and Y directions. In the top equation, we have the initial momenta of both friends along the x direction on the left and the final of both on the right. And the same idea is applied for the y direction in that bottom equation. What's nice is that there's a few things here that we can set to zero. Do you remember how Abigail moved purely in the y direction at the beginning towards the north? Well, that would mean she only had a velocity in the y direction and her velocity in x would be zero. Thus, her x momentum would also have to be zero. The same thing goes for Sam, except in the y direction. He was moving purely along x, so his y velocity would be zero. And hence, so too would his y momentum. With those terms removed, let's get a fresh perspective on our equations. Here we can see that we'll use the sum of the final momenta in each direction to figure out the initial speed of each person. Let's start with Sam in the x direction. We want to isolate the velocity variable found on the left here. So let's divide both sides by Sam's mass. If we simplify this, Sam's mass will divide out completely from the first term and we'll have a ratio of Abigail's mass to Sam's in the second. Let's go ahead and plug in the numbers and be sure to use the cosine component of the final velocities since we're working purely in the x direction here we'll get the following initial velocity for Sam, and that's one half of part A done. Let's go back to the Y equation and do the same thing for Abigail. We'll isolate her initial velocity on the left by dividing both sides by her mass, and this time we'll have a ratio of Sam's mass to hers in the first term, and the second term will divide out her mass completely. Plug in the numbers using the sine component of the velocities this time. And when you do that, you'll arrive at the following. Now we know both initial velocities and part A is done. In part B, we'll figure out how much the total kinetic energy decreased during that collision by calculating the change in the kinetic energy. 
I'll take the sum of Sam and Abigail's final kinetic energies and subtract their initial ones. Let's start by factoring out one half from each term. We can also group up the terms that belong to Sam and Abigail specifically, the first and the third for Sam, and the second and the fourth for Abigail, and then factor out their masses, like this. When we plug everything in and put it into the calculator, you'll find that the kinetic energy decreased in that collision by just about 639 joules, which will round to 639 to match the three significant figures that's found everywhere else in the problem. Both parts are now done, and that's all we have to do here. As always, thanks for watching.